Hey there, Fudder Universe. Okay, so uh, we're inside right now because uh, the uh, sun goes down pretty quick around here. It's like about 4.45 right now. I know some people live up in Sweden and Scotland, places like that. You know, the sun goes down at 3 o'clock in the afternoon, I guess. Some places it doesn't go, doesn't come up at all. And I don't know, whatever it is. Okay, that's neither here nor there. I got a great comment from somebody today. <clears throat> Said they would uh, like some information on how the... Uh, Vibration reduction if you're Nikon, image stabilization if you're Canon, shake reduction if you're um, Pentax OS. Not sure what that is. I think OS is Panasonic. I forget what it, what it means. Um, anyway, so be that as it may, <clears throat> if you got a Canon system and you're uh, the dog's deciding he's going to get in on the act here. So, um, yeah, um, the, two, the two basic uh, kinds of um, vibration reduction, image stabilization, shake reduction. Um, you've got it built into the camera body, like in the Pentax or the Sony. you got it built into the lens, like in Nikon or Canon. So you can have a Canon lens, like this 17-40L, that does not have any image stabilization built in. Um, like this lens here, is a um, uh, 70 to 200 f4, and this is the one with the image stabilization built into the lens. So uh, you can get this lens without the image stabilization, it's about 600 bucks. With the image stabilization, it's about 1100. So the image stabilization makes, you know, it's expensive in Canon. <coughs> so, you know, sometimes they offer a lens with it and without it. Um, okay, so how does it work? Um, well, we won't go into details because the different systems are different. Either they're moving elements in the lens or they're moving the sensor in the camera. If it's a built in the camera versus built in the lens. Be that it's, as it may, when do you want to use it? Well, it's taken me a while to, to figure this out. You would think like, hey, it's shake reduction. Let's leave it on all the time. And, you know, ironically, if you don't need it, you should turn it off because it will degrade your images. So what I'm trying to say is your standard operating procedure should be a shake reduction, image stabilization, vibration reduction is something you turn on when you need it. You leave it off when you don't need it because this way your images will actually be sharper. I, I mean, it just it's it's what I've come to realize. Okay, it does it it'll degrade an image if you don't need it. Um, obviously, will improve an image if you do need it. Okay, so so my rule of thumb is I leave it off and I make the conscious decision to turn it on when I need it. So when would you need it? Well, the two things that your camera controls basically are aperture and shutter speed. That controls the amount of light hitting your sensor, and um, and uh, image stabilization has no effect on aperture. Okay, it won't. The aperture in your lens f4, f5, 6, f8, f11 is meaningless to image stabilization. It has nothing to do with it, okay? What image stabilization, of course everything's related. So obviously if you shoot at f16 and you could have shot at f28 and had a higher shutter speed, then it has something to do with it, okay? But what I'm saying is, is basically, if you're already at f28, like, okay, this lens goes to f4, so you're already at f4, right? And you're getting shutter speeds that are too low, we'll go into that in a second, Image stabilization will help you with those lower shutter speeds, okay? But that's only if you're already at your wide open aperture. Or let's say you got a shot where you want to shoot at f5.6 or f8 for depth of field, but you're on the fringe, okay? You're a couple of stops off with your shutter speed for hand holding. Image stabilization will save the day, okay? So think of it this way. Image stabilization, the best way to wrap your brain around this is image stabilization, vibration reduction, shake reduction, helps you with your hand holdable shutter speeds. Okay, that's the way to understand this. All right, <clears throat> so what's a rule of thumb for hand holdable shutter speeds? With a full frame camera, the rule of thumb has always been the reciprocal of the focal length of the lens should be the shutter speed you're shooting at. For example, if we rack this lens out to 200 millimeter, we want to shoot at 1 250th of a second, you know, 
At 1 250th of a second, at 200 millimeter, we'll probably get a sharp shot handheld. Can we shoot 1 25th? Nah, not really. I mean, you know, unless you're really good and you're braced against the wall and all this. Try it, okay? But the rule of thumb, at 250th of a second, with 200 millimeter, we're, we're good to handhold, okay? So, what about 100 millimeter? Well, we're zoomed out to 100 millimeter. What's the slowest shutter speed we can handhold? 1 100th of a second. How about 70? 1 70th of a second, right? I'd go 1 60th, right? Now, obviously, if you're hand holding a telephoto lens, you want to go, if you can get 500 seconds, awesome. Okay? Not that 500 of a second is going to be that much sharper than 1 250th of a second if you're at 70 millimeter. I mean, you know, it's a threshold. Once you're over it, you should be pretty much sharp. Okay. The same works the other way for wide angles. I mean, if we're at uh, 20 millimeter, I mean, in theory, you should be able to hand hold the camera at 1 20th of a second, okay? But really, you know, 1 30th, 1 60th, when people start getting below 1 60th, that's when you need to start worrying. If you need a, a shutter speed, to, you know, that's full frame. If you got a crop camera because of the multiplication of that, double it. So if you're at 200, you need 1 400th to hand hold it, okay? <laughs> Photo dog agrees. Okay, so <clears throat> we're out shooting in the world, right? We're walking around, we're shooting at, uh, let's say, uh, 30, 35 millimeter on your lens, okay? All right? Uh, this is a bad example. This lens doesn't have um, image stabilization, but let's say it did, okay? Let's say this is a Pentax, all right? And I'm walking around, I'm shooting at 35 millimeter, and I've got 1 60th of a second, so I'm golden. I just shoot, 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 but I would keep image stabilization, shake reduction, vibration reduction off. Okay, because if I'm, if I'm, because it can only degrade the image if I've got enough shutter speed. Okay, so I'm walking around, I'm shooting, I'm shooting at f4, I'm at 1 60 of a second, uh, the clouds just came, right? And now I'm down to 1 15th of a second. Okay, and I look at that and I go, ooh, I'm at f4, 1 15th of a second, now I'm, okay, image stabilization on. Two stops, right? 1 60th, 1 30th, 1 15th, I'm in the ballpark. In theory, with image stabilization, the modern, the new image stabilization, you get three, four stops at it, right? I don't know about four, that's, you know. Try it, what do you got to lose, right? Okay, so image stabilization, 1 8th of a second. Yeah, try it, you know, groovy. So that's how it works, that's what it's all about. Um, Leave it off unless you need it and know when, you, when you're going to need it. And it's based on shutter speed. Okay, and the shutter speed is the reciprocal of the lens. Different for crop camera, different for full frame. Basically with crop camera, just double it. So, um, watch the video over and over again until that makes sense. Okay, because that's what's the beautiful about this. You know, you can rewind and I can say it again and again. But that's basically what the deal is. That's how you implement it in the field. That's image stabilization. And also, tied in with that, you need to know what are hand-holdable shutter speeds, okay? Um, what I was talking about earlier, right, you, you're shooting at 1 60th, the light at f4, and now the light went down to 1 15th. Let's say you're shooting at 1 60th at f4, and you know what, you want f8 for depth of field, okay? So you crank in f8, and now you just went down to 1 15th hand-held at f8, as opposed to 1 60th at f4, image stabilization, you can get your depth of field. So it extends your edges. You know, if you're out there shooting F11 and you're getting one second, you need a tripod, okay? That's just all there is to it. But image stabilization will give you a little bit, a couple of stops of shutter speed. Okay, notice it doesn't have anything to do with subject motion. You're shooting a football game, you need one 500th of a second or better to stop the action. Image stabilization won't help you at all with that, okay? It'll help you for stuff that's not moving. But if your stuff's moving, then you need a faster shutter speed and image stabilization is gonna do a thing for you. So I hope that helps out. I hope that helps clear up image stabilization a little bit, what it's for. That's that with Photo Universe, and that was a great question because I'm, I'm sure a lot of people are like, what, you know, yeah, I got image stabilization. I'm not sure how it works. Or I got VR, I got shake reduction. I, I'm not sure. This isn't about how it works so much. This is about when do I use it. Okay. All right. Hey, that's it with Photo Universe. Thanks a lot. Appreciate it. And uh, enjoy the comments. They're good. So keep them coming. Appreciate it. Thank you. Bye.